Welcome back to Heroes Next Door. Thank you all for joining us today. We are in Westchester, Pennsylvania. We're going to be taking a look at the Chester County Hazmat Team. We're going to meet up with Chief Bob Stewart, and he's going to walk us through their vehicles. They have four different vehicles, but we're going to specifically focus on their most important one. Hey, Chief, how are you doing today? I'm doing pretty good. How are you doing? Not too bad. Thanks for inviting us out. All right, no problem. So real quick, tell me what vehicles you have. You have four that I understood, right? So we have four. We've got three of them here. Um, we also have a pod truck. Um, it's behind me here. OK. Um, basically, that just has a lot of our big equipment in it that we don't use every day. Um, so we bring it out. We can use, you know, big overpack drums. We got, you know, a lot of the bulky stuff that we can't fit on the other truck. Right, right. right. Um, then we got the command vehicle. Okay. 2014 Tahoe. Um, basically has all the stuff in the back for uh, running incident scene, command board. Um, it's got some spill supplies, but not much. Um, tank trap, uh, drain cover, stuff like that. It's just something to throw down to get started. So as you make it on the scene as the chief, you're making a quick response. You can actually start the process and wait, have yes, the guys show possible, up yeah. behind. Yes, if possible, yeah. Yeah, if possible, I can. Basically, if like it's a diesel spill or something that's not too awful hazardous, you know. Right, right. Um, and we got 15.2. This is our oldest truck. It's a uh, 20, 2005 uh, Chevrolet um, with a rescue body on it. Um, basically, it has... Uh, some limited entry equipment, um, but it also has our decon equipment, some of our old school research material, yep. the hardback books and okay. stuff. Yeah. Um, also has our medical records. We have to carry them with us um, in a lock box. Um, EMS, some EMS equipment, basic BLS bag, um, and that way we can take our own bottles if there's not an ambulance, a BLS unit on okay. scene. We can take our own bottles before entry. Right, right. And just basically. Uh, some overpack stuff for lithium ion batteries, which is the new. Yeah, that's the newest thing coming around. The newest around. thing coming around. Um, so we can take care of this, you know, any of the uh, ion battery emergencies that come up in the county. Okay. Now that um, looks four wheel drive. Is that one? Yes, drive that also? is four wheel drive. Um, so this this is a 2020 Pierce Enforcer chassis, rescue body. Basically, it was a rescue truck. It was a demo. Um, we got it um, in 2020. Um, basically, turned it into a hazmat truck. Okay. Um, so nice it has truck. a lot of our meat and potatoes stuff on, um, a lot of our meter, our air monitoring equipment, okay. um, our testing equipment and it, instruments. Because it was a demo, that's why you have the red and white versus the white and yellow you, you were always traditionally with. Or are you switching off? Well, our, the truck that this replaced was red. Okay. Um, not quite this color red, it was a little brighter red, right. um, but it was red. Okay. Um, so the next truck, when we replace the next one, should be red. All right, gotcha. We'll see. We're planning on it being red, so we'll see. All right. Can you open the driver's side uh, and kind of show us yeah. what's up front and how it works? So up front, you got your regular uh, fire truck cab, basically. Okay. Um, the only difference we have is we actually have a rad monitor, radiation detector. Um, it's actually underneath the front bumper. Wow. And as we're driving, you know, if we're say there's an incident at Limerick Power Station or Peach Bottom Power Station. As we're driving up, we may get um, an alert. Okay. So that'll tell us as we're getting there, hey, we need to back up. Right, right. So, so you that's, don't become that's, those canaries that we talked about. Correct. <laughs> so that's a good thing. Yeah. Um, and we actually, all three trucks have that. Okay. Um, even the Tahoe. So, you know, we're driving up, we're going to go, oh, let's back up, let's regroup back here. Awesome. awesome. Um, of course, we have old school, we do still have map books. Mostly we use GPS, but yeah. we still have map books in case we need them. Um, a couple other. And harder to find. You're right. <laughs> um, getting, a, you know, got a couple other quick reference materials up front. So when we're pulling up, ERG, everybody uses. Yeah. Um, a couple other things. Ulster side, it has a pack, air pack seat, um, and the mask up front. Portable rack. All of our portables are charging right there between the front and the back of the okay. cab. All right. And then back here. Um, these were actually built as EMS shells, but we use them for our metering equipment. Okay. So we have all of our uh, meters charging. We have multi-rays. We have toxi-rays. Um, 
We have uh, a tactic ID, which now it's out of service, but that's our ramen technology. It's back to the manufacturer getting looked at. Okay. Um, now I have, noticed you have air packs on here too. Yes. And why do you need air packs for hazmat? Don't you normally stay outside? Well, so we may have to make an entry. So if it's, I'm gonna use chlorine as an example. If it's chlorine gas, we get in a level A fully encapsulated suit. So you need to have SCBA on because there's not much air inside that suit. Right, right. Um, but most of the chemicals we deal with, you don't want to inhale them anyway. Okay. Um, and not everything we do is outside. Some of it is, some of it's not. Pack seats, that keeps them out of the compartments. We actually have more room in the compartments now because we have the pack seat. Right. So also in the cab, in the back, we have a workstation so they can get in and out of the weather, um, do their research. We have a, a printer that we can hook up to our laptops. So if they bring something up, we can print it out if we need to print it out. Um, I'll show you our drone later. We can also download uh, pictures and stuff from the drone if we need to print it out for the IC or just to get a better look at it. We can also print it out with the printer in the cab. That's pretty cool to have in there. Now, how many people actually can sit in the back here then? Um, so there's four pack seats in the back, plus the officer and the driver. So we can carry six. Okay. Um, normally, the way we work, I'm the only full-time person on the team. Everybody else is paid on call. Okay. So depending on where it's at in the county, because we cover Chester County and it's a large area, um, most of the responders will go private vehicle. Um, we have a core group of probably about five or six that live in the Westchester area. So they'll come here and make sure the trucks get out. You usually have two, at least two on a truck. Got a driver and then somebody to help navigate and look yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then they'll meet us all on scene. That's a good way to do that, um, especially. So it's, it's not bad. It works yeah. pretty good. Um, in this first compartment, we have pull out. This pull is out a transverse drawers. tray that goes all the way across. Okay. Um, so what we see on this, we'll see on the other side when we get around. Yes. Okay. So we have our radiation detectors. We've got um, different other various instrumentation, um, storage boxes. Um, we also have our weather station so we can set it up so we don't have to call in for uh, if there's a storm coming or wind direction or, you know, wind speed, all that stuff. We got it right here. It goes to a monitor mounted in the cab. Um, of course, everything's Bluetooth. Yeah. So yeah. Bluetooth, it transmits to the monitor in the cab so we can get real time weather. Right. So that helps us in our plume model. So you don't have that delay like that. that you normally have on a cell phone app or anything right. like that. You're instantaneously or, getting or that weather. Or calling back to the 911 center right. and having them give us the weather. Right. You know, we got it right there. Once we get it set up, we got it. We also have pH paper, spill classifier, um, different things for our ray monitors, different attachments. Um, wands, tubing, stuff like that. Okay. Um, and that's pretty much all in these two shelves. This bottom shelf, we have our command, stuff for the command staff, the clipboards, the vests, all that good stuff. Yep. All the important paperwork. All the important paperwork. <laughs> um, accountability ring, and then we got a Class E fire extinguisher. And this green fire extinguisher, not everybody, it's technically not a fire extinguisher. Right. It is a, uh, for, the, this one is for a caustic spill. So, like, if you have a base that's caustic, this will neutralize it and make it yeah. neutral pH of seven. Okay. Um, and then we have one on the other side that's for acid. So, we have one for acid, one for okay. uh, a base. Are they both the same green we'll, color? Or yes, they... they're both the green color. Okay. Um, this one's got blue writing on the top. Okay. The other one has, I believe, red writing on the we'll top. See we'll see when we get when there. We get yeah, there. Yeah. I believe it's red. Oh, and the most important thing is we have snacks. Snacks. <laughs> Can't go without snacks. Because if we're out there for a long time, <laughs> guys need to get a little bit of, of nourishment because um, you'll you'll expend a lot of energy in a lovely suit even if you don't do a lot of work yeah right right um, so we have foldable benches up here basically these are just painters benches okay we use there's no back on them so it's easier to sit on with an SCBA on right while you're putting a level a suit right um, on and <clears throat> getting dressed and of course then we got regular oil absorbent um, kitty litter um, plug and diking uh, putty okay um, in case we get like a saddle tank leak in or something yeah, like yeah. that. Um, once again, we got a five gallon drum of acid and base. Same thing as in the fire extinguisher. Okay. We can just take a cup and, and spread it out. Okay. 
um, rock salt for winter time when we get <laughs> right, icy right. roads. Right. Um, spare cylinders for SCBA, um, fuel fill. We have pappers, cartridge, uh, respirators, green bins for our tools. So guys are going down down range. They need you know wrenches or meters or whatever. They can carry a lot more stuff in that bin than they can in their two hands. Right, right. We always have a backup team, just like in the fire service, you have a RIT team. So yep. we always have a backup team. So if something goes bad, they can go in and get them. Or if they need to come out because they're low on air, the backup team can go in and then we'll just get another backup team dressed. And then we'll keep switching like out until we get right. done what we need to get done. Get right. the leak stopped right. and, and mitigate the situation. Um, we also have our grounding and bonding kit. So basically what that's used for is if we, if they're going to offload a tanker that's been in an accident or something, so we'll ground and bond. So we'll bond them to each other. Okay. The one that they're offloading, the one they're onloading to, and then we'll do, uh, we'll also ground it to ground. Okay. So we'll put grounding rods in um, and then string wire and test right. it and make sure it's yeah, because it's getting always everything not, to ground. From my understanding, I, now I'm not a hazmat technician. I, I'm right. more hazmat awareness. My understanding is it's more the vapors that can be the most dangerous stuff rather than the solid fuels. Yes. Uh, that the vapors are what can ignite, and that's why grounding it and making sure there's no sparks because you don't want to do those vapors. Right. I, Correct. Yeah, yeah, you got it. You All got right, it. I passed my so, test today. So yeah, the, <laughs> the vapors, you know, if they're flammable, you do not want a static spark. So basically, what that does, it takes a static charge, takes it to ground. So there's not that static discharge when they're moving product through. Yeah, training. yeah, that's awesome. Um, we also have, you know, a red bio bag. So this may not necessarily be for bio waste, but it just may be for contaminated stuff. Okay. Um, we'll put it in the red bags. That way we know it's contaminated. Right, right. Um, so then back here, basically our drum cart slash tool cart. Um, it can fold out and use four wheels, or we can use it as a dolly with uh, like a hand truck with yep. two wheels. Um, a little giant ladder in case we have to get up on a tank or, you know, valves up above so right. we can get in there. Right. Um, spare air packs, all of our spare cylinders in here, the ones that don't fit in this. And we're up above us, you have a canopy? So, yes, on both sides, there's an awning. Okay. Basically, it's like an RV awning. So we got controls right here, we can bring that out. So they can stay, you know, stay out of the, if it's raining, they don't have yep. to stand there in the rain. If it's, you know, sunny, they got shade they can get in. Um, so it keeps, keeps them out of the weather a little bit. Maybe not entirely, but, you know, yeah. gives them a little bit of a yeah, break. Yeah, gives you a little bit of a shade or cover. Now, did you have to actually order those with those or did, did that come with it because it was that rescue? No, truck? we had to order those. We ordered those from an RV place down the road here. All right, back here. Obviously, you don't have hose. You don't have a hose bed like a no. rescue truck. No, so. we have no hose and no water. Well, okay. We do have water, but it's drinking water. <laughs> um, so basically down here, we got all of our gloves, um, different types of gloves, the dollar signs, that's how much they cost. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, you know, they're used for different things. PVC, Viton, neoprene, butyl, different chemicals will react different ways with different plastics or rubbers. Wow. So that's why we have different gloves. So. Oh. When we find, figure out what the chemical is, then we need to look at the compatibility of the suits and the gloves and the boots. And, you know, so that way it doesn't dissolve while we're working on <laughs> yeah. it and everybody's good. That'd be a bad day if you lost that, your glove. That is a on. bad day. <laughs> um, and then we got little bags. So the entry team, they can put their valuables in a bag. Okay. So, you know, you take your wallet, your cell phone, your car keys, all that stuff, put it in here. We'll put it in the cab. Yeah. Um, they can even, you know, if they want to, they can write their name on it. Um, that way we have their stuff secured. So it's and not And they're not just bringing anything out. home. You're protecting, <laughs> right. the, you're protecting them on scene and you're protecting the family yep. when you do stuff like that. Taking that minute to get rid of your valuables makes a world of difference yep. when you go home. Absolutely. You don't want to bring that stuff home to your family because, you know, a lot of the stuff that causes cancer anymore, I mean, just about everything does. So you don't want long-term effects on your kids or your spouse or anything like that. Right. Um, and then chem tape, it's kind of like duct tape, but it's chemical resistant. So it's more chemical resistant than duct tape is. Right. Um, so we use this, you know, for a lot of various reasons. Uh, one of the main things we use it for is to seal up around the gloves and 
the cuff on the level B suit. Right. Um, because right. they're not integrated. Um, so we usually tape up around there so nothing runs down in. Okay. Okay. Um, keep you keep from getting exposed. Right. Do you have anything up top in the coffin bins? So up top in the coffin bins, we have a lot of, of our spill stuff um, that's on this truck. So we have booms, um, basically those white tubes that you see yep. every once in a while. Yeah. Um, we have pads. So basically it's just a uh, white, most of them are white. There's some gray, some pink, depending on, you know, some for acid, some for uh, petroleum products, oils and stuff, and then some for bases. So, gotcha. I think it's like a two by two pad. Yep. It's real thin, but it like absorbs the stuff out of the water. So okay. like today it's raining. So if you had an oil spill, it would take the water, but it, or it would take, take the oil off the water, but leave the water. So it cool. just takes the petroleum. Cool. Um, we also have grounding rods up there. We have uh, PFDs, okay. personal flotation devices, because we may need to deploy uh, our floating boom in a waterway or near a waterway. Okay. So if you're near working near a waterway, you gotta have your PFD on because you yeah. don't want anybody falling Chief, in. You were thinking of everything so. when you talk about this truck. <laughs> I wouldn't even have thought to put a life preserver on, but yeah, you're right. Yeah. You know, if you go off the side of a road into a, a small creek or whatever, right. and it's flooding, right. you gotta be able to stop that and get in there and do what you need yep. to do. And thinking of to put a life preserver on there, it's perfect. Yep, trying to trying to keep everybody yeah, safe. Trying yeah. to keep them safe. Um, oh, and the, and the big bins on the shelf are all the PPE. So level B suits, level A suits, okay. boots, that kind of stuff right. in those bins. Right. So they're, they're separated by size okay. and by type. Okay. So there's probably about four different types, um, depending on the chemicals, is depending on what type of suit that you use. Right. So if I were uh, a firefighter in the county and I wanted to get involved with you, uh, I only have hazmat tech, or uh, awareness, right? Mm -hmm. With my fire one certification. Right. How do I go about becoming part of your company? Can I become part of your company? How does so, that work? On his website and the job would be posted on there. Okay. So you just put an application in through the would county. Would I have to come with my hazmat technician already? Do you guys teach it to me? Do you send yeah. me to classes? How does that work? So the minimum that we want you to have is operations. Okay. Um, so you got awareness, operations, technician, and specialist. Okay. So the minimum we would like you to have is your, aware, or, uh, your operations. Um, and if you don't have technician, we'll send you to get technician. Um, we actually, two of the guys that we just hired three, four months ago, they're gonna go get theirs this summer. Okay. Um, so mainly we use Anniston, Alabama, the uh, Center for Domestic Preparedness. Yeah. Um, it's free classes and it's a very good class. They use some live chemicals and stuff. So you get really good training when you do your initial uh, technician training down okay. there. So okay. very good training. So in here we got all three of our chlorine kits. Um, so there's different size cylinders for chlorine. Uh, an A kit is for a, almost like a shape of an oxygen bottle or an acetylene bottle, okay. that, that size bottle. Um, the C kit is for a rail car, a chlorine rail car. You don't get too many of them around here. We ha do have a few railroads to go through the northern part of the county. Yep. Um, and then the B kit is for a one ton cylinder, which is for uh, water departments. They'll use that one ton cylinder. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of uh, water plants now are getting away from using chlorine. They're using other technology now because, you know, technology keeps going yeah, and going. So right. they're using a little bit different, but there's still a lot of them that use chlorine. So that's why we got that. And this was, a, as you can tell, this is an old metal box. This is a plastic box. Yep. This is an updated kit. So <laughs> we just got this one a year and a half, two years ago. Um, a lot of the steel parts are now aluminum, which makes it a lot easier to carry right. and manipulate. So. Um, and then these black bags, or these are our multi-threat suits. Okay. So they're called MT-94s, they're made by Lion, um, and they're a multi-threat suit. So they almost look like your firefighting turnout gear. So you got that, that flash protection, that fire protection on the outside. Um, but they also are good for chemical, they're good for biological. So that's why they call them the multi-threat suit. Right, right. So, and you have what, three or four um, We got three right, or four right here. Uh, we got two more, I think it's one of the compartments up here. Okay. Um, so we got them on there, they're good. Um, and they're like anything, they're only good for certain things. So chlorine, mm -hmm. you need a level A suit. So you still gotta go with the fully encapsulated suit, but stuff that we could use uh, level B entry for, we could use those okay. if it's a, got a flammability okay. problem. Now, one of the questions that came up in my mind while we were just talking, you and I are different sizes. I'm much mm -hmm. taller than you are at this moment in time. 
sometimes a little bit bigger, you know, that kind of stuff. Right. How do you fit the suits? Are they one size fits all? No. Do, you, do you get the guys fitted for so, that? No, so they're different sizes. So basically those, we have a total of six of those suits. Okay. So they're different sizes. So those come in medium, large, extra large, double X, you know, and we got a various sizes. So we kind of got to, when we're looking at our entry team, we got to kind of fit the suits to the person okay, and make sure we got suits to fit that person. So that's training um, beforehand. And that I, is training beforehand. Yeah, yeah. make sure we'll I know when it. I show up on scene, I'm going to be right. able to fit in a suit. Correct. All um, right. You got so, a light tower? <clears throat> we have a light tower on this unit. Okay. Um, so it's got six lights. So, I mean, it'll, it's really, it's not LED though. This was before they had the LED okay. uh, light towers. But it is still bright. Um, it'll light up that whole parking lot out there. So nice. Um, nice. This is our basically we're turning this into our kind of a drone, our drone depart or oh, compartment. Yeah. Um, and uh, going to be for our battery tools when we get them in. Okay. So basically, we have two drones. We have a smaller drone, um, which is a little better than a hobby drone, but I mean it's it's kind of small. Okay. Um, it was the first one that we got, um, so we have it as a backup. And then we got our public service drone. So basically this drone, it's the larger size that you see uh, a lot of fire departments, a lot of hazmat teams, a lot of police departments use. Um, it has an infrared camera on it, has a regular camera. Um, you know, it's got okay. a lot of, doesn't have all the bells and whistles, but it's got a lot of them. Right, right. Um, so the good part about that is if we have an outside propane tank, before we send anybody downrange, we can take the drone and we can do a recon. So we don't have to get a couple people dressed to walk down there. We can just fly the drone down, right. see what's going on. With the infrared camera, you can see the tank level. So you know how much is in the tank, you know, and it, that's a good tool to have because, you know, like I said, the infrared, you can see the tank levels. You can know, you know, is it full? Is it almost empty? Right. You know, then you know how much product you're dealing with and what you got to contend with and containment and all so that. So as emergency vehicles, we don't necessarily have to have our CDLs to drive a lot of these vehicles. Do you have right. to have a part 107 to fly your drone yes. during an incident? We do have to have 107s. This compartment, we have tank trap. Okay. So basically if a tank or valve's leaking, it's just dripping or a very slow leak, we can throw that under, we can capture the product until we get a more permanent solution or if they offload or whatever. And it's probably, I don't know, two inches, maybe three inches tall. Okay. So it'll, it'll hold a good amount of product. We right. got some that are 225, 225 gallons that'll yeah. hold. Wow. And some are 150 gallons. Okay. So bigger one, this was a smaller, I think that's a smaller one. Um, so they're different sizes. Uh, pipe and patch kit. So if we got a pipe that's leaking from, you know, let's just say the plant, um, we got different things in there. We can patch that pipe, stop the leak. It right. It's not a permanent patch. It's a temporary patch right. just to mitigate the incident so we can, you know, everybody can go home safe. Um, so basically a couple toolboxes, um, a couple other of our patch kits um, for drums, for, you know, different size pipes. Um, so like this pipe patch kit is like from you know, half inch up to maybe three inch. Yeah. Um, and most of our hand tools are brass, so they don't create sparks. Okay. Go back to yeah. the flammability part right, again. Right, right. So they don't create sparks when you're, you know, tapping on stuff or something like that. Right. Are you a fire department considering a new building or renovation? Or are you an architect looking to build a public service building that truly makes a difference? At the Fierro's Fire Station Design Symposium, collaboration is the key. Be inspired by groundbreaking design that prioritizes safety, efficiency, and community integration. Join us at the 2023 Fierro's Fire Station Design Symposium and be part of a transformation experience. Down here in the bottom, we got a lot of different things for like for drums. Um, this is called a bung wrench. Okay, so yeah. 
the little things on top of the bungs. Yeah. So you may just have to tighten that up, and that makes the problem go away. Yeah. Sometimes it's easy as that. Yeah. Sometimes not quite so much. Specialty tools, love them. Um, but you know, we got a lot of little specialty hand tools and stuff, um, dome clamps. So like if a tanker's on its side, the dome on top, yep. the manway. Um, if it's leaking, we can put a clamp on there and clamp it down tighter, so maybe stop the leak. If nothing else, we can at least slow it down. Right. Um, like I said, we may not make the problem go completely away, but we can at least make it less of a problem than what it was. Okay. Um, but come along in case we need it. So with all these different specialty tools and these patch kits and stuff like that, when you do that, you essentially lose that piece of equipment then, that patch. You have to go, oh, out, yeah. you have yes. to go out and buy more. So a patch, you know, if we're patching a pipe, if we're patching a drum, overpacking a drum, that, that's gone. Okay. We, for the most part, we write that off. So, I mean, and we get funding different ways, so I can, I can send them a bill for personnel and all that, um, but we also get uh, grants from the state. Mm -hmm. So this is the transverse compartment that we saw on the other side, mm -hmm. but this is the other cylinder that you talked Correct. about. Correct. And you were right, it's red. Yes, Blue it on is one red. Blue red on the other. Um, so yeah, so this is the acid. Uh, neutralizer. Um, we actually have a spare in there. So we actually have a battery box to okay. jump in case we have problems on scene. Um, but we have a, uh, this is called a Hazcat kit. So this is an old school way to determine a uh, unknown. Okay. Um, so basically it's just different tests, um, almost like you did in high school in your science class. Right. So you put a match to it and if it lights up, it's flammable. Right. Um, or and what color it lights up? Blue, right. orange, Right, and there's different, there's different tests. Um, so, you know, that helps us at least narrow it down to a family. May not the specific chemical, but at least get us down to a family and we can maybe do some detective work and get it from there. Right, right. Um, so basically this is just our cow gas for our meters so we can bump pump test our meters okay. when we get on scene. Yeah. Um, a, a throw up canopy. In case we have to be away from the truck, we can throw uh, basically your typical your, one you use at a picnic or yeah, whatever, your basically is what it is. Tents or whatever um, they it's, are I think it's 10 by 10. So, yeah. you know, throw it up. We got a little bit of shade, a little bit of protection from the weather. Looks like you got a sked then, um, too. So, this is a sked. We actually have two of them one's up top, okay. one's here. Another cart that we have in there, we got a, the uh, electric reels on both sides. So, if we're out away from the truck, you know, we need to plug in lights or whatever. We okay. Can, you know, run a cord or run a reel out there and, right. and plug uh, lights up. All right, and then as we move forward, this is back to the other side, just getting in the rear. Yeah, this is the other side in the and rear. And then you're a captain's chair. And then this is the Office, passenger side or officer officer's side, seat, captain's chair. depending on you know if you're fire service, if you're not fire <laughs> service. Uh, we have our uh, our mobile dispatch computer. Okay, and that's um, the same one that the county has across the same, board. Same one the county has all across the board. Um, I have one in the Tahoe. Um, we have one actually in both trucks. Okay. Um, so, and mine, I have stuff loaded up in it where I can pull up and look and see, you know, if we pull up Sarah tier, tier two, um, I can look, see what kind of chemicals they have um, and stuff on my way there. Or as soon as I pull up, you know, I can just hit a couple buttons and okay. I have that information. Right, right. Um, so. Now, the one thing I noticed that you don't have or I haven't seen, do you have Knox box keys on? No, nine times out of ten, we don't need Knox box keys. Okay. Um, now, if we go. Already there. Right. Or if we go to a facility, like a manufacturing facility that's a serocyte, yeah. um, we've already talked to them. Their security will have keys. So we meet up with them, or the fire department does, yeah. and then we So all you know, that pre planning that you go and, and you know, all the footwork Correct. beforehand makes a big difference. Yep. So. All right. And then up front, what do you carry up front? So. Out front, we do have a, we we got this compartment, but there's really nothing in it. Okay. Um, this is a wench. Okay. It's a good hideaway it's wench. Good to, it's good to have, I guess, in case we need it. Yeah. As you can see, it's still got the paint on it. <laughs> still brand um, new. But yeah, and it, this is a movable wench. So we can take the, the pin out and we can put it on the sides or the back. Okay. This yeah. one's just the back. We're seeing a lot of fire companies that are actually starting to do that. They integrate it into the bumper. They keep it covered so it stays mm -hmm. clean. A lot of times when you put things up front, you know, the road debris and everything right. else, by the time you get it, the gears are all jammed up. Yep. So by hiding it away is a good way to do that. Yeah, it keeps think, the cable clean, road dirt in the cable, and that way it wears the cable right. you know, sooner than the regular lifespan. Okay. okay. Well, Chief, this is an awesome truck. I have a favor to ask. Mm -hmm. I want to know what it feels like to put on one of these suits. 
You think you can put me in one of these? Suits? Oh yeah, we can help you out. All right, let's do that. Before we do that, guys, do me a favor. Hit subscribe, hit notification, so you can keep bringing you more. All right. So right now I'm getting set up to, to get put in one of these suits. So the chief is getting me all the gear. Um, I know he mentioned earlier that I'm gonna have to get rid of my personal stuff. So normally I would get take my badge off or wouldn't have a badge, get my pens, my wallet, my glasses um, in order to get my air pack and stuff on. But as he's taking it out, I'm looking at this suit here and it's like a really thick tarp that I would put over say my tractor to store it for the winter time. It's no wonder you're going to sweat in these things and the fatigue that I'm going to get by just putting it on is going to be tremendous. So I'm curious to see how the chief does it. And uh, he's got a couple other people here. I think we're going to bring in Keith. He's one of the uh, emergency operations guys. Uh, and uh, he's going to help me get in this thing. All right, chief, you direct me. Tell me Are what I ready? need to do. First, you got to take your shoes off. Shoes off. Okay. Easy enough. Or so I thought. Side zipper. <laughs> She's off. So we'll open this up. Feet in first. Feet in first. Okay. Just like when you were little, putting on feet pajamas. Yep. All right, that feels pretty good. Now, what are you doing there, Keith? Well, you're rolling up the pant leg because of why? Yep, we're rolling up the pant leg because it'll end up coming up over the boots after, and then it'll be uh, set up and ready to go right over it. Okay. So these boots are a little bit different than what you normally have, where it just has a stretchy, uh, stretch closed system to make it a little bit easier to put on. Okay. Now, you remember what I was talking about earlier about getting your food in? Yeah. Yeah. So you wear nine and a half shoes. We used 11 boots. Wow. So it makes And it they, even with that, with all that different material on there, it feels snug. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let me give it a pull here. There it is. Okay, so. You definitely have to uh, pre-size these things uh, before you get there. You just can't show up, but yeah. Okay. So those just latch over. So they just go around these little buttons. Okay, then the pant leg comes over top. And then pull top. the pant leg down over top so nothing goes down in your boot. So it's almost like a double seal at that moment in time because I still have the yep. booty that's connected mm -hmm. and then plus the other. Okay. So. I'm going to give them my glasses there. We'll take those off. For now, I'm just going to keep my wallet in. But uh, next I yep, put on right. the air pack. Put on the air pack next. So these go. are the typical SCBAs that we would wear on the fire grounds, right? Yep. Okay. Okay. And then I would put my mask on. Do I go on? When do you go on air? Over there. Before you put your mask on, usually we do a entry briefing. Okay. So we've already done recon. So basically what the entry officer and the operations officer is going to do is they're going to brief the whole team, but specifically the entry team, the backup team. And they're going to say, this is what we think you're going to run into when you're in there, or we are, depending on you know, if we got a good look at it or not. Um, this is what you're going to have to do. You're going to, have to patch this pipe or patch this hole in the tank or whatever. Okay. Um, and then you would be sitting here like this for that. So we're trying not to expend too much of your energy. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then you go ahead and mask up. Um, we'll put that over. And then just like a normal one, you'll grab from here and you'll just pull it back from the front and you'll pull it back over. And then we would help you get tight if you didn't want to, if you couldn't do it yourself, depending. Right. And then one other thing you would also have before you zipped up the suit, you'd have a, a radio. Okay. So. Um, our entry radios are intrinsically safe, um, but you also get 
uh, it'll be an earwig and it would be a uh, push to talk on your chest. Okay. So, because while you're in the so suit, yeah, while you're in the suit, it's, it's kind of hard. Um, so you can just go like this, so you can, you know, talk on the radio. Okay. So, say we got the radio on, what's next? Stand uh, up. So, go ahead and click in. Yeah, there you go. Good. You good? Uh-huh. We'll go ahead and put your arms in. Put it up over your head. Right now, around sure. back, we're making sure that the FCBA is completely in there. And not only do we have a zipper, we also have Velcro. So the Velcro will also seal the zipper. So vapors and liquid do not go in through the zipper. And then you're good. Good. So we don't do any tape around the wrist because it's already done, right? Nope. So, so not with this suit. So these suits, it's it's a, uh, it's all tied together. So there's no break. So the tape around the glove in the suit was level B's. So a lot of your level B's just have a regular cuff. Okay. So to keep stuff from going down, um, we just run a couple rings of tape around it. Right. So that way it seals it and. You know, you don't get stuff going down your cuff and down your arm, right. stuff like that. Um, so, how's it feel? It, it's not bad. Like, I can feel the fingers. They're actually yep. pretty good gloves. Yeah. So I can feel the dexterity in the fingers. I feel like there's a lot of extra space, but it's not too heavy. I was right. expecting it to be a little bit heavier. Yeah, it, it's not too heavy weight-wise. Um, the only but, other thing that you might, you, we would put on you is a pair of medical gloves. Okay. Um, that way, if you get a puncture in this glove, you still have gloves on, and then you would get out. Right. Because once you puncture your suit, you're the coming out of the The distortion between the mask, though, is a little bit different. Yeah. As you look at different things, or if I got to do a fine detail, the wrinkles kind of change your view a little bit from going through the mask and then through the shield up front. Right. So. Yeah, it, it, it messes with your depth perception. Man, so, this is cool. Yeah. So on our, our mask, we do have a voice amplifier, but even in these suits, it's really hard to hear, even with that amplifier. Um, and the problem is uh, sometimes with the radio, you'll get feedback. Yeah, so I've been standing here for, what, three minutes, if that, and I can still start feeling myself start to sweat. It's oh, yeah. almost like I'm in one of those heat blankets for survivability, and I don't need it. <laughs> So once again, this was Heroes Next Door. This was a hazmat truck for Chester County, Pennsylvania. Thank you, for uh, Chief, for taking us around, letting me get in the suit, see what it feels like. If you guys have never experienced any of this or you're interested in this, please get a hold of the Chief. He uh, would be more than happy to talk to you. Go to their website, uh, and thank you all for watching. Once again, this was Heroes Next Door doing a station rigs. Don't forget to subscribe, hit notification, and keep smashing those like buttons. We'll see you again next week.